The Roads to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total Energies. Can nature help us achieve carbon neutrality? On our journey towards net zero, man-made solutions are imperative to remove emissions. But harnessing and supporting our planet's own abilities to absorb carbon dioxide is also vital. Earth naturally regulates carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, keeping its temperature stable through what is called the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the process by which carbon is absorbed and stored in living organisms, oceans, forests, rocks and soil, also known as carbon sinks. The carbon is then released back into the atmosphere when, for example, creatures die and volcanoes erupt. Since the industrial age, humans have added excess carbon dioxide that the Earth alone cannot absorb. This imbalance has caused climate change, which is endangering our planet. We will first avoid, then reduce, then store our emission. When we can't do that, the last tool is to do a natural-based solution. As example, you can do some plantation project, you can also protect some area, or you can promote some uh, sustainable agroforestry. Nature-based solutions can provide improved air quality, improved water quality. It can function as climate mitigation, meaning that they capture and store more greenhouse gases than they release. Restoring, conserving, and developing land, forests, and oceans requires large-scale global efforts. The US and China have really well evolved and adapted economies. There's also an abundance of land, so larger scale nature-based solutions are possible. And of course, the US and China combined occupy around 43% of current global emissions. I think currently there's around $133 billion of investment going into uh, nature-based solutions globally, but that's only continuing to increase. Businesses are also investing in carbon offsetting. These are schemes which aim to offset equivalent emissions through solutions such as reforestation and conservation. To ensure offsetting is successful, schemes must fulfill strict regulations and standards. Why not reduce those emissions, move to renewables, and at the same time reforest and rewild vast areas of the world which we've destroyed, but we can bring back to nature? Large amounts of carbon can also be absorbed by living creatures, especially great whales. Thanks to their size and diet of phytoplankton, a single whale could capture as much carbon as 30,000 trees in its lifetime. When they die, they sink to the bottom of the ocean and take that carbon with them, locking it away for hundreds of years. Nature is not an infinite resource and can't capture all our excess carbon emissions. Scientists believe natural sinks such as the ocean, plants and soil will soon reach their absorption capacity. One man-made solution being deployed is carbon capture and storage, also known as CCS. This is where carbon dioxide is captured and separated from industrial and energy sources, then stored or reused in ways that isolate it from the atmosphere. It's a good solution for industries what we call hard to abate industries such as cement or steel, because you can capture 90 to 95% of the CO2 you are emitting. While many CCS solutions store the captured CO2 underground, Icelandic company Carbfix have developed a process to turn the CO2 into actual rock. Carbfix is a company here in Iceland that has been mineralizing CO2. We capture it from a geothermal power plant here in Iceland and then we dissolve it in water and inject it into the ground where it turns into stone, quite literally, in less than two years. The amount of CO2 that Carpus is currently mineralizing is about 15,000 tons every year. It is roughly equivalent to about three or 4,000 passenger cars. The project that we're currently working on will be able to mineralize 3 million tons a year. That is more than half of all of the emissions of the country of Iceland. Protecting and restoring the huge variety of natural carbon sinks is critical. Forests alone keep the Earth's temperature at at least 0.5 degrees cooler, while also protecting against droughts, floods and heat waves. However, deforestation has removed a third of the Earth's forests and is responsible for approximately 15% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So Total Energy is uh, investing in projects in natural-based solutions. 
we are with partners on the ground supporting the development of such projects. For example, in Congo, we are uh, planting a large area and it will bring 10 million tonnes of CO2 in carbon sink for the 20 years coming. In Peru, we are preserving the primary forest. The land we are preserving is up to 1.35 million hectares. And in Australia, we are working on 20,000 hectares in order to capture 3 million tonnes of CO2. It's developing a new farming system. We are also making sure that if we have to remove trees for our development, we will plant another one, you know. It's not about carbon credit, it's about not removing any carbon sink on the planet. The ocean covers over 70% of the Earth's surface and is estimated to absorb around a quarter of our annual CO2 emissions. Therefore, it's important to protect and preserve its ecosystem. Just within the United States, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has estimated that coastal wetlands capture and store 8.1 million tons of carbon dioxide every year. The Great Barrier Reef Foundation is using smart technology to repair damage to underwater coral reefs. The team rears baby coral larvae, which a robot called Larval Bot then delivers to areas where it's needed most, acting like an underwater crop duster. This clever robot also tests the water quality, removes pests and monitors the growth of its colonies. Microscopic marine algae are crucial in the world's carbon cycle. They can sequester more CO2 than any other plant, as well as providing oxygen. Marine algae is easy to grow and can survive in almost any environment and uses far less land than trees. It could even be used as a future source of protein and fuel. Total Energies has partnered with Veolia to develop CO2-based microalgae cultivation with the aim of producing next-generation biofuels. Mexican company Green Fluidics are also using microalgae, this time to develop new biosolar panels. The biopanels can be placed on almost any surface that gets sun exposure, including windows, walls and roofs. We are combining this traditional technology that are the solar panels with microalgae and nanotech to create this biopanel, this living system. We are catching the solar radiation and we are taking advantage of them in order to generate energy. And the microalgae is going to use this solar radiation in order to absorb the carbon dioxide from the environment and to release oxygen. We are helping to clean the air, not only in the building, but also in the surroundings. It's clear if we're to achieve carbon neutrality, we must protect and develop natural carbon sinks as well as utilizing industrial carbon capture solutions. This will help decarbonize our planet and rebalance the carbon cycle as we work towards a net zero future. To find out more, visit roadstocarbonneutral.com. The Roads to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total Energies.